Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hollow Mode and today on Hollow Mode we're getting into your Vanity Fair's After Party Oscars Fashion Roast and Review, but this is only part one because there's a lot of looks to talk about. We're we'll talking about some of the most exciting looks from the Vanity Fair Oscars After Party. We got to, that's where the fashion goes. The Oscars red carpet is a little more buttoned up and the Vanity Fair is where everybody lets it all hang out. So. Let's begin. Not starting off strong, to be fair. America Ferreira, listen, beautiful moment on the red carpet for the Oscars. I was very happy to see it. Again, I stand by that. But this red Versace blazer dress, it's a little plain Jane for the Vanity Fair Oscars after party. It's in general, it's not what we expect. You know, normally you go to serve it up, you do fashion. And this is very like calm. So listen, I also understand that like she might've been wearing that dress, a real process to wear that dress, but at the same time, Everybody else showed up and showed out. So like, it's not really kind of an excuse to be honest. I also think the blazer fits fine, but as we get towards the hem, I don't really understand why there's that layering of the fabric or whatever that is that runs around the bottom. And then there's another little sliver of fabric there. I don't really get it. Is it meant to be like a double layering? The length is like fine. The shoes, I always love the Versace, you know, big old pump. I'm not really sold. Maybe if we had done like a sheer shirt or something underneath to like keep this whole sheer vibe going throughout, it would have played into the whole thing a little bit more, a little more styling. But yeah, a little disappointed to say the very least. Next up we have Anita who is wearing Fendi Haute Couture. It's pretty much a floor length tank dress that's uh, sheer and she's wearing a little bikini bottom underneath. Fully embellished, it's a sheer dress. And like, listen, I don't mind a sheer dress, but I think a sheer dress also sometimes should have a little bit more dimension to it. I do think it fits really well and that's great. Love to see that. I think it hits the floor in a great manner. I just kind of blah. Not really very interesting, not really super exciting or memorable. It's it's just a embellished sheer dress. Next up, we have Anya Taylor-Joy, who is wearing Miss So He. I like to see Anya supporting young, cool designers. I think I like this. Listen, I love the headpiece. That goes without saying. I think it's very cool. I love a headpiece in general, and I feel like Anya's been getting more and more into them because of Dune as well. I'm happy to see this hair slick back full crystal with a little pearl drop earring attached. The cocktail dress in and of itself, I think is fine. It's fully sleeved up. The shoulder, a little out there a little bold, a little poppin'. And I think just the way that she's standing, I think makes it look a little strange. But again, it's, it's just the placement of the arms. The flowers that sort of trim around this deep plunge neckline, I think are good. They sort of bring in what's going on with the headpiece. And I think I kind of like this butterfly partially sheer bra. I do think it's cool. I do think it's different than what we normally see. And it gives you the ability to sort of have a deeper plunge while still covering up certain areas so you're not fully exposed. I guess almost in a weird way, it's like I wish maybe it was a full gown, but I also understand like she was just in a full gown, so she wants to be a little bit freer in a cocktail dress. I do get it. I think it's just maybe the length I'm not like obsessed with, but I do love the headpiece. I like it from, I would say like the bust up, the bust down, it's okay. It's fine. Next up, we have Billie Eilish wearing Vaquera. Yeah, listen, Billie likes a big oversized suit. I feel like she switched it up definitely for the Oscars and her performance at the Oscars as well. Vaquera, again, cool, young, up and coming brand. I think they were based in New York. They might be based in Paris now. I'm not really sure, but I do appreciate the pant length. I, I like the big, I like the bag. I like the fact that they're also like rolled up just a little bit. Now I know that the blazer is meant to be big and baggy and like the sleeve length I get. I totally understand. Like I like an oversized sleeve myself. I don't know if it always works in like a suiting fabric to be completely honest. I feel like a knit, it's much better. Maybe a shirt in and of itself can be okay, but like a an actual tailored blazer, I think it's harder to wrap your mind around it. And the shirt underneath I do think is cool. I like the fact that it sticks out a little bit. I feel like it plays into this whole oversized vibe. But again, not really loving, not really super excited by. I appreciate again, working with cool young up and coming brands, but I also don't necessarily know that to me, this really like shows off the coolness of Vaquera. So yeah disappointed. Next up we have Katherine O'Hara who I have to talk about because I love this look by Robert, one that she's wearing. It's a great example of you can do a sort of high-waisted full-length skirt and at the same time wear a blouse or a button-down shirt with it and it can be chic. It's just that instead of wearing a white shirt and a pink skirt or a white shirt and a 
a blue skirt or something like that. I love this idea of the Robert One paint drip and splotch motif running throughout the entirety of the look. So up top we can see it's a silk blouse and sort of cream and it has all these different sort of blotches almost like watercolors that were you know put on a paper towel you know. It looks like that. We can also see that there's the beautiful really long pleated collar and little pleated cuff which I just I love. Robert one is brilliant and I think it's really cool to see that signature detailing of his shirting up close and personal. And I think it's a really great way that like if you want to support Robert One and you love the clothes and maybe you can't afford like the haute couture, you could buy a, a blouse like that and it still keeps the integrity and such an important technique and house coat of that brand. There are these beautiful little bauble embellishments that are placed on each of the splotches that actually correlate to the color. So where there's purple, there's purple. Where there's a sort of this muted green, there's green. Where there's this sort of light yellow, there's yellow, light blue. Like, it's just really smart. It keeps this continuity of the theme while still differentiating the skirt from the blouse. I love it. She looks great. I think it's very Catherine O'Hara. I also think it's very much just something Moira Rose would wear, so love. So next up we have Charles Melton who's wearing Ferragamo. Listen, it's a black suit, it's double breasted, it's really kind of simple, I would say more or less. I, I don't mind it. I think the Ferragamo needs to show off that it can do sort of really clean, easy, wonderful things for men because I think a big driver of the Ferragamo sales is their car shoes and also Ferragamo belts. I do think the tie is interesting because I can't really figure out, there's no knot and I kind of like that look, the no knot tie look, I don't really understand how they've done that, but it's Maximilian Davis and Ferragamo. So like things happen and I say, wow, and I don't really get it, but I love it. The pant is like fine, I guess. I love the shoe. I do, I always like a Ferragamo boot. They're beautiful. Overall, I'm not wowed by it. I do wish maybe we'd gone for something a little bit more pizzazzy, but at the same time, I feel like Charles Melton is like, I didn't get nominated for an Oscar. I thought that was a crime. I thought he was fantastic. Actually, truly think one of the performances that didn't get nominated and I said, oh, oh, the girls don't have as good a taste at the Academy as I thought. But I like to see him saying, no, 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 I'm gonna have my Oscars moment now. Next up we have Coleman Domingo. I love this man. I love him. He makes me so happy. He's so joyful. He's so wonderful. He is a fashion gentleman. He's wearing Balmain. This is a beautiful look from their most recent menswear show. We can see that the shirt underneath is sheer and actually has like a little bit of a plunge. And I'm so intrigued by it because I think it's a really cool detail that exposes the body yet doesn't fully expose the body. There's a nice trouser, a nice little boot and patent leather, but the coat, this human face coat is so amazing. Olivia Rousson, he knows what he's doing. This full crystallized coat, this coat is fully crystallized and has the motif of eyes and lips and a nose and then another eye on the shoulder and then the lips on the other side. Like it's just a really cool look and the fact that they created this out of crystals rather than it being printed or embroidered, they hand placed these crystals so that it looked like that. That is fashion, that is chic, that is elegant. I also love the fact that Coleman didn't let any other part of the look take attention away from the face. You know what I mean? His face, the face on the jacket, he said, no, 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 this is what is important. This is the focus, we need to, to keep it here. You know what I mean? My eyes are up here, okay? Keep them here. Next up we have Cynthia Erivo. She's wearing a Louis Vuitton. I kind of like it. Listen, I know people are gonna be like, Luke, you're crazy. And like, maybe I am a little bit, but I do wanna say that I like the purple. I think the purple is really, really lovely. And while when I look at it up close, I might not love the fit, to be completely honest. I don't. I normally wouldn't like the gold sort of trim on the side because I don't re I wouldn't really understand where it's coming from. I do think from afar, it does help to really sort of shine in terms of the purple that runs down the front. I do think, again, like the fit is maybe the problem to me. And I do think that the intriguing element of these sort of lines that run down the center of the bodice is intriguing because I feel like it's probably trying to reference like six packs and creating sort of abdominal sort of motifs there. The white embellishments that run down the side of the skirt, I also don't know if I necessarily get, but I feel like they're trying to play with what's going on up top. But listen, I don't love it. I like the look of it from afar. Up close and personal, don't love it. I do appreciate the fact that though, again, like we went for it and Cynthia, I think, definitely doesn't let the dress overpower her. I think that's the amazing thing every single time that you see her. It's so rare to see her overpowered by any garment. And I think here, even though this is a whole lot of dress, there's a lot going on. She's still the focal point of it. I just think that fit wise, it could have been better. I 
don't mind Nicolas Josquier and Louis Vuitton being a little bit out there. And I think Cynthia also is somebody that is willing to really take those risks. I just don't think that this one landed in the same way it did at the actual Oscars. But again, the Oscars was such a serve that like, I am willing to take some of that into consideration. Next up, we have Davine Joy Randolph, who is wearing Valdron Sahidi, who she's been wearing for a lot of her looks throughout award season. I really like this look. I think this is a good moment for her. I think it's cute. I think it's a little bit more controlled and a little bit more focused than what we saw at the actual Oscars. I like the neckline. I think it's cute. I like the way that it curves into the armpit area. And then I like the front sort of layering flap situation that runs off of the hip and down the front. And the fact that it's crystals sort of helps to lead your eye in using the reflectiveness of the crystal from the light. But on the side, underneath the crystal, it looks like there's like a drop stitch situation going on too that slowly fades into a sheer. I love that. I think it's cool. I think it's a nice little texture. And at the same time, because it's black, it does not take away or it doesn't draw so, so much attention. Rather, it's a detail that you kind of have to look for to see. And I think it's a cute little detail. I think it's good. I like it. I thought it was nice. I think it's better than what we saw. And I'm not mad about it, so I'm gonna take it. Next up we have Donald Glover and Amiri. I like it, listen, I think it's a little bit different. I like the red with that sort of light pink underneath in the shirt and then the tank top. I think it all works together color story wise. And I also feel like it has cool, suave menswear moment and feeling. I really love the shoes. I think that these sort of black boots with a white sort of panel in the front to me reminds me of like spats to a degree, but it's also a pointed toe. I like the idea of playing on the shirt. I I like the shirt being open. I like the color story. I, I just think it really overall works. And you're bringing in the white with the tank top and the black with the lapel of the jacket. A shawl lapel, to be fair. And it all strings itself along really well. He looks chic. He looks handsome. He looks cool. And yet he's not boring. He's not banal. He's not bland. Next up, we have Emily Blunt. She's wearing Dolce & Gabbana. Listen, I like this dress in the sense of I like the dress. I think it looks really pretty on her. I think the color, although I know a lot of people will say, oh, it's too pale on her or whatever. I, I don't mind the color. I think the color looks sweet. I think it's a nice little dress. Very obviously lingerie inspired, which is a Dolce thing to do. The pink lace, I think also just exposing a lot of the seaming and the seam allowance sort of gives you this notion of a boudoir sort of gown. I, I don't hate it. I really don't. And I I think coming off of the Scaparelli, this is, it's a nice dress. I think the Scaparelli in this maybe could have been reversed, although I would have wanted more at the Oscars, to be fair. I think the Scaparelli would have been so good here. I would have had so much more of a fun time with it because of the Vanity Fair after party element. I would have said, yeah, girl, like take your underwear that's not really underwear off and, and live your best life and put it over your dress. Have a good time. This dress looks nice on her. It's a little more tame, a little bit more toned down, a little bit more egalitarian. I don't hate it by any means, you know? Next up, we have Emily Radajkowski, who's wearing a Jekka Moose. I didn't love this. Listen, I will say, I didn't really love this dress on the runway. I know it was meant to be sculptural, inspired by Giacometti, the iconic Italian artist and all that jazz. I just like have an issue with the fit of it. I don't really mind the idea of like this fabric sort of being imprinted with bust areola. I think that's kind of cool. I, I like that look. What my issue is, is at the stomach, the way that it fits and also sort of where you can see either the lining of the skirt or just where the lining of the skirt because there's that sort of harsh mark that wraps itself right around the sort of thigh area and then it falls and it's just I think it's a tough fabric to make look good unless it fits immaculately it's a tough fabric I get the idea of wanting the imprint to be there I don't really feel like the sheer element also necessarily works because normally on the runway it was like over the head and it was like a veil and a wedding dress. And like, I don't know about you, but this is not the wedding dress for me. I think the execution and the, the fit is the problem. And I think that's always going to hurt a look regardless. I just feel like I'm seeing a lot of wrinkling. That line that wraps around the thigh, I just, I don't like having to see the skirt lining or anything like that because it just takes you out of the fantasy of the whole look. I appreciate that she made an attempt to be a little bit out there, just didn't fit the fashion template that we needed. 
Next up, we have Emma Stone, who is wearing Louis Vuitton because she is a Louis Vuitton woman. She's Nicolas Jasquier's muse. This is a look that I believe is based on the most recent LV show, the Fall 2024 collection, which just kind of came out. Emma had done her fittings for her Oscars red carpet look while she was in Paris. And I assume that she must have seen this dress or gotten a little bit of a preview of the dress before the collection came out and said, I want to wear that. We can see that it's a asymmetrical hem, which is a Nicolas Jasquier thing he's been doing for quite some time. There is this sort of sheer reflective, I'm going to say silk, that has these little diamond paillettes attached, which I actually kind of like the diamond paillette. I think it differs from the runway that had these circular paillettes, or for the most part, I remember them being all circular paillettes. I do like the exposure of the bra and the brief underneath in that sort of light icy blue. I think it's cool. I think it works. I think it plays back again into the, the collection. Uh, listen, it's not radical. I'm not like jazzed by it. I don't really think, oh my gosh, how exciting. But at the same time, again, I understand that we wore a whole lot of something on the carpet and we want to be a little bit chiller here but it's still somewhat fashion it still incorporates just gear isms at lv like i'm not mad about it i don't love it but i'm certainly not mad about it i want to say in advance I really appreciate Florence Pugh trying. She's really trying. She's really trying to be fashion. I'm rooting for her in that regard. And I love her for it. You know what I mean? She is working on it. This Jean-Paul Gaultier au couture look by Simone Rocha, there's something about it that I'm not really sure that I love. And I think it might be the fit of it, which is hard because... When you look at it on the runway, it's obviously being worn by somebody that is taller than Florence. I think it really is a matter of the fit of the garment. This dress is fully sheer, except for this little peplum area that sits around the waist and covers part of the pelvis. I think that something happened in translation where either they took the original sample, which I don't think they did. I think they must have made this dress. I would assume they would have made this dress for Florence because I think it would have been really hard to take apart an old couture sample and refit it to Florence. And so I just think it's it's a matter of fit and proportion. So the top, I don't really mind. It looks a little bit bigger than it did on the runway, but again, she just, I assume, has a bigger bust than the actual model, so I get that, but it looks like it's a little baggier in certain areas, which sucks, because I want to like it. And I do like the decal motif situation that sits on the actual bust. I just wish that it was bigger and covered a little bit more of the bust, because I think that was a part of the look. As for the peplum, I love actually getting to see up close and personal that it does still have the little feather flits that there were on the runway. I just never noticed them, to be completely honest, on the runway. So I appreciate Florence for bringing attention to that. But the problem with this peplum is it not proportionally working because on the runway, we can see that the decal sits underneath it, whereas... On Florence's look, the decal is being half covered by the peplum. I guess maybe they didn't remake it or they they raised it. Something's going on where that really nice decal is being covered. So it looks really strange to see only half of the decal underneath the peplum rather than seeing the full decal. So I wish maybe they'd shortened the peplum. It might not have had as much papa as a peplum, which I think sometimes can be okay, but it would have exposed more of the decal. And so that, I think that's my issue here. It's just really a proportional issue. And I don't really blame Florence because I think she picked an outfit that she was like, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to be fashion. I'm going to be out there. And I love that. It's just the fit is not great and doesn't do the work that it needs to do in order to really sell us on the look again. See, that's what I'm saying is you can have the fashion and all that and it's great. It's just if the fit isn't there, it's not there. I think that the train behind looks really nice. I think that's really lovely. I don't even hate the length of the actual skirt where it hits on her. I think it's quite cute. I, I just think that there's something going on from like the bodice to around the top of the thigh that just doesn't execute well on what the look originally was. And it's unfortunate because evidently Florence is really wanting to be more exciting, more exhilarating, more fashion conscious. And I see it there. It's just, unfortunately, we got to work on proportion and fit 
because it sucks that it's not delivering. Next up, we have Greta Lee, who is wearing Loewe. Now, I kept seeing all these pictures of Greta Lee from the side, and I was like, oh, like, it's a pretty silk dress. It looks nice. I like the halter, lifesaver embellishment that pipes all along the sides. I think that's cool. But I was like, I need to see the dress from the front. And so then I was looking and looking, and I could not find a picture of the dress from the front. And then I was like, wait, Greta Lee literally, like, would not pose front ways. She only would pose from the side. And then I saw somebody at Getty Images just took a sneaky, sneaky picture of her from the front. To a degree, kind of get why she was posing from the side. I'm not obsessed with this like drape over situation. It's just sort of different. And I appreciate different on occasion, but I don't think it works. I'm going to be honest. I have a feeling Greta might not have also thought it worked because she knows how to pose and she knows what she's doing. I also think there has been a focus on exposing the back when she's been wearing a lot of Loewe pieces. So I feel like she's continuing that element. I do overall wish she had gone for a little bit crazier of a Loewe look. The Vanity Fair after party is kind of the time to like do wacky and wild. Like we could have done a suiting moment. We could have, there's so many cool Loewe things. I think this is a little bit simplistic, a little too commercial and casual from Loewe for me for this context. I'm kind of disappointed in it, which sucks. Love Greta Lee, love Loewe, I love what they've been doing. I just think this is the moment where it would have been really like a wham pow, and we didn't get a wham or a pow. Next up we have Hunter Schaefer wearing Bottega Veneta. It's pretty simple. It's a very well fitted strapless black floor length gown with a high slit. The thing that I assume it's supposed to be is a take on a blazer because we can see that there are two sort of blazer like pockets that sit on the hip. I don't love the gloves, a little wrinkle dinkle. You want to like do a silk and like pop, but also I just maybe wish that they'd been in like a matter fabric. I think that would have helped me. It's really simple for Hunter, especially like the past few Vanity Fair red carpets that we've seen Hunter really sort of go for it in. I want to know, is the dress leather? Is it cake or is it Bottega? For some reason, she had this like cape on, this asymmetrical cape, and she took it off on the carpet. And so there's this picture of her with this big old cape, and I love it. Where was that? I'm mad. I want to see that. You know what I mean? Like that's fashion, okay? Don't save that for like a little paparazzi picture, people. Show me that on the carpet. I want cape. I want capeology, okay? Capeology is important. It's like hairology, hairography. It's needed. It's necessary. It's draping. It's beautiful. It's stunning. The look is not complete without it. Without the cape, kind of blah. With the cape, love. Stunning. Gorgeous. Can't believe I didn't get to see that cape. Next up, we have Issa Rae. She's wearing Valdron Sahidi. I like the swag thing that wraps around. I really like that. Something about the fit of it, though, I can see a lot of, of puckering at all different places on the dress. Love the swag. The fit, to me, feels a little bit odd.com. No good. Thank you. Jennifer Lawrence in Givenchy pulled it out. Listen, I've been kind of like, whatever about Jennifer Lawrence's red carpets. Recently, I love the Empire waistline on her. I think it's beautiful. I thought that this was a custom piece that they made for Jennifer Lawrence because I was like, wow, like this is really cool. I don't know if there's like Uber de Givenchy reference moment going on. The Givenchy creative team without a creative director sort of leading them. It's been like nice because I feel like I like the fact that they're going into the archive and the references are really beautiful and all that stuff. But then I found out that this is actually a vintage dress. This is a fall 1996 Okachor dress that I believe is designed by John Galliano. I'm pretty positive it is. And I love it. It's very John. I think the Empire waistline, I think even just the little bit of the bolero kind of jacket thing, it, it really reads as John's love of particular periods, especially, you know, the Regency era. But I think the fact that it's also sheer is really lovely. The flowers are so delicate and sweet. They're gorgeous in this sort of beige and white. She just, she looks stunned. She looks stunning. It's a beautiful dress. It's exciting. It's gorgeous. It has a lovely historical nod and reference point, yet still, because of the sheerness, feels pretty modern. It doesn't feel like it's wearing her. It doesn't feel also, though, like so costumey, you know, Jane Austen core. It's kind of amazing. So everybody seems to be pulling out their John Galliano's as of recently. Interesting. 
I would say so. Next up, we have Kelly Rowland, who's wearing Nina Ricci. Now, this, I believe, is from Harris Reed's Spring 2024 collection. Essentially, a black velvet cocktail dress with this sort of scoop neckline, which I don't think it's the dress. I think there's something underneath the dress that is showing that's black that kind of looks to me like it's raising out of the dress. And so, like, that's a little bit throwing me off. But the thing that is kind of exciting is this big gathering poof skirt in white that juts out of the cocktail dress. I think it's very Harris. How Nina Ricci it is, still unsure. But I like the dress. I don't mind it. I think it works. I think it's cool. A good way to do the cocktail with still adding a little bit of something something. I love the gloves. I think those are fun. I think the bows are gorgeous. I think it works. It's not my most favorite Kelly Rowland look, but I also think as far as Nina Ricci goes, I'm happy to see it on the carpet. And also... I think it works. Now, speaking of John Galliano, Kendall Jenner wore Maison Margiela. This is from the most recent Haute Couture collection. I love this dress. I loved it on the runway. I love it now. I think that they've been doing a great job of putting these on celebrities and they really, really do work. I love this black lace. I think it's beautiful. And I still don't understand how they created these sort of upside down like flower petal like shapes that sit on the waist. I don't, I really still don't get how they did it. And then there's this gathering right at like the top of the pelvic area, which is so funny to me because John Galliano references a lot of sort of merkins, which were kind of like pubic wigs that have historical context and connotation and were something that women did wear at a certain period of time. And so I kind of love that even in you know, not a print or a textile manner. The gathering is sort of referencing the Merkin. I think it's really, really cool. Also the fact that the corset is on there. It's just, I think it's a cool look. I also think that Kendall is somebody that is always going to sort of tone things down a little bit. Like she's not really dedicated to the full look and like giving it all. I think it also speaks to the fact that these dresses are impeccable. They're beautiful. They really translate well because anybody can wear them and anybody can look good. I was happy to see it. But Kendall, it wouldn't kill you to like try just a little bit hair and makeup wise to give it a little something something, you know? Next up we have Kim Kardashian wearing Balenciaga. This is one of Demna's Okachor pieces that has the rised asymmetrical fin things, but instead of it being like a shark fin dress in the back or jacket, it's a sort of fin in the front. Here's my thing about the dress. I like the idea of the architectural sort of shark fin situation neckline. I think it's cool. It was one of the ideas from Demna that I really, really loved. My issue is it doesn't look like it fits impeccably. And that's a problem to me. Like if it's going to be haute couture and it's going to be Balenciaga haute couture, like it needs to fit. It should not be wrinkling and puckering right where the corset ends. First of all, Balenciaga hand checked every single garment that left his haute couture house to make sure that they were right. And like he was a perfectionist. I get it. He's gone. But like I expect better than that on somebody that is like the ambassador for Balenciaga, especially if it's haute couture like this. I don't also really love what's going on on the sides of the dress. We can see that like obviously the darts are there, they're fine or whatever, but like it's wrinkling right underneath the side of the bust. And I, I just think that's my big issue is like, I should not be seeing imperfections in Balenciaga Haute Couture because like if there's one brand that I would say mm, doesn't really do imperfection, it's Balenciaga. And then on top of it, when it's Haute Couture, that's not how that works. I have a green silk Balenciaga Haute Couture dress that's hanging in a closet and she has water damage and yet she looks better fitted than that. So just want to say, and I love. Now, next we have Kylie Jenner. She's wearing Ludovic de Censor Nin. Listen, I really like this dress. This is from the most recent Ludovic show. It was fall 2024. And this is a full Oraton or chain mail dress because Oraton is more Versace, but I think it fits Kylie really, really well. I like seeing a chain mail that fits well, especially from a young brand. I think that with a Versace, it's like there's the expectation that that fits because it's a house code and they've taken so long to figure it out. Here, I think this fits her beautifully and I like and have even more appreciation for it because it's coming from a designer who does not have a well-established, super built up shit ton of money house. Very happy to see it. I also love the floral motif that runs throughout it. It's something that 
not all brands that do chain mail, like they've perfected that. And I think that here it's great. I think the color is lovely on her. I don't even mind the crystal that does sort of the, the strapping of the bust and right under the bust line and neckline. It looks great. It looks really good. I think it's a great way of Kylie doing simple, fitted, gorgeous, but there's a little bit of dimension both in textile and in motif. She looks nice. I'm happy to see it. Next up we have Laverne Cox. Laverne has been turning it out in Mugler. I love this beautiful little look. This is from the spring 2024 Mugler collection by Casey Cadwallader. I love this transparent sort of PVC piece. It's really cool. It takes on the pannier and it takes on this idea of emphasizing the hips and body enhancements and things like that, but it's clear and it's transparent rather than trying to like make you think that you're looking at a body enhancement but you don't know if you are and it actually is and it exposes that. You still have these hip cutouts which add that sex appeal. I love the crop top. I like the way that it just shows a little bit of under boob. I think it's cool. The sleeve fit is fine. It could be better but like I don't really care because in reality the rest of the look really good, really chic, really fun. Very happy to see it. Thank you Laverne. We appreciate you. Next up we have Lily Gladstone who's wearing Gucci again. I like this. I think this is cute. The neckline I don't know exactly what the reference point is there, but I have a feeling that it is probably some sort of nod to indigenous craft and textile design. I don't know, but something about the color, something about the circular motif, like it just, it feels like that to me. Again, I still really like the Gucci and Lily did that amazing Joe Big Mountain sort of collaboration moment. It was really cool, it was really smart. It was a great way to sort of incorporate this idea of different craft can be done and you utilize those crafts people and highlight them rather than just taking the design and then doing it yourself. And also shout out to Sabato DiSarno, who's the Gucci creative director, because he really had to say, you know what, unlike most other designers, I will step to the side a little bit and say, I can share the limelight. And that's not something that really happens with fashion designers. So like, love to see it. As for the rest of the dress, I think it's really cute. I like the cap sleeve. I like this tiered sort of fringe skirt. To me, the fringe and the tear and the sparkle, but really subtle, is very Sabato at Gucci. I think it works. It still fits at the waist really, really well. And I love the fact that you have the sleeves that jut out because I think it only helps to further enhance this subtle little hourglass figure. She looks gorgeous. I really like it. Next up, we have Lupita Nyong'o. She's standing next to Joseph Quinn. He's wearing a black suit. It looks nice on him. Let's move along. Lupita is wearing Armani Privé. I believe this is from spring 2024. Listen, Armani Privé always looks good. Like, I think the fit is good. I think the black sequin is good. I can only imagine how many small little black sequins there are on this halter neck gown. I will say, I'm not the biggest fan of the part green, part blue, but I feel like it's just a little odd, a little bit out there, a little kooky, a little crazy in the world of Armani. It kind of makes sense. I could, I could be into it. I think the blue, two of the blue panels would have been so good. I just think it would have proven that blue and black can go together so, so well. The green, I also think would have been nice. I'm not a two different kind of thing person. Fits her beautifully. The sequins are gorgeous. Next up we have Margot Robbie who showed up wearing vintage Thierry Mugler Haute Couture. I believe this is from the spring 1996 collection. From my understanding, it's also the collection called Le Cologne, which translated from French, I believe is the columns, AKA like tall, beautiful cylinders. In the context of Margot Robbie wearing this beautiful gold corset dress thing. Okay, tall, cylinder, beautiful, stunning, gorgeous foundational, important. I get it. In reality, it's this beautiful gold corset with the boning semi-exposed, or at least the lines of the boning exposed. And it's full of crystals and embellishments from the neckline that gradiate down. The crystals sort of create a little bit of a belly button detail right around the belly button, and then moves down and creates kind of like a crystal fringe right in front of pubic region. And the way that Margot is holding this little sort of silk cape here, here. I kind of like, again, this idea of like the pubis becoming, it's, it's having a moment. It's, it feels cool and fun to me. Now the dress itself is actually fully fringed around. So it's not just a focus there. It's just that this picture of Margot is the one that I kept seeing. And I was like, wow, we're really emphasizing the area. Interesting. But of course it fits her beautifully. I love it. I think it's really different for her. I'm into it. It's making me a little bit more excited about what we're going to see going forward with Margot fashion wise. Next up we have Michelle Yeoh, who is wearing Balenciaga. Listen, I think this is the kind of Balenciaga haute couture that I expect. 
from everybody, including Michelle Yeoh, because the Oscars moment, still heebie-jeebies. I love this conical neckline. I think it's very cool. I think that it's kind of sculptural. It's kind of Balenciaga-esque, but I think done in the black velvet, which is a Balenciaga signature fabric, it's that perfect way of incorporating a really refined, easygoing, haute couture element. The big gold feather brooch or embroidery there is lovely. I think it's really sweet. I think it really, really works. I think the fit of the dress is gorgeous on her. I really wish she had worn this to the Oscars. I think that this was the dress for that moment. It's still really elegant and chic and really fits to me Michelle Yeoh's vibe. But at the same time, it's still fashion. It's still that construction. It still holds that sort of weight of the name of Balenciaga. I think we should have switched the outfits and even then we should not have utilized the outfit that we would have switched for. So yeah, love this on her. Beautiful, stunning, gorgeous. My queen is back. Thank you. Next up we have Rosé who is wearing Saint Laurent. I don't love this. The dress is really simple. It's a really simple sort of brown strapless silk, I assume crepe dress with a little bit of a back detail. But like from the front, it doesn't look like it fits well. And if you're going to do a really simple dress, especially Saint Laurent by Anthony Vaccarello. Like, I expect a lot, lot more. If it's gonna be that simple, it needs to fit to perfection. And that doesn't look like it fits to perfection. I don't understand what we were doing, because this is like an Oscars dress. It's simple, whatever. The Vanity Fair after party is where you go a little crazy. Maybe like a headpiece, maybe that sort of draped fabric that we saw on the runway. Thank you, but no thank you. Next up we have Sandra Huller who is wearing Scaparelli again. I really like this again. I think it's a cool look. It's a reference in my opinion to the most recent Haute Couture show. I love the big neckline. I love these sort of folding out wing like shapes with the plunge. It's lovely. The fit at the waist a little not great, would expect a little bit better to be honest, because again, it is puckering in on itself and it really shouldn't be doing that. The rest of the skirt I think does fit well. I think it looks nice. I'm also intrigued by the fabric because it looks almost like a crushed velvet of some sort. And I really feel like we don't get to see a lot of that. So I'm, I'm rather happy and gleeful to see it. And I think it reflects really well in terms of the fabric. I love the embroidery on the actual sort of wing panel neckline things. And I like that Daniel Roseberry and Sandra Huller kept with this whole idea of emphasizing one certain part of the dress, which is the neckline and sort of creating these exaggerated, interesting, surreal like shapes. Yet, they're very different dresses. They really have different components, different interests, different intrigues, but they keep within the same sort of element. And there's that continuous idea running throughout both of them. I have to say, I think Sandra Huller was one of the best, most consistent celebrities clothing wise for this whole Oscars charade. And last but not least, we have Sydney Sweeney, who is wearing vintage Mark Bauer. Now this dress that Sydney is wearing is actually what Angelina Jolie wore to the 2004 Oscars. I'm gonna be honest, I do like the dress on her a lot. I think it's beautiful, I think it's stunning. I think that her hair really works with it well too. I do think that she understood how to sort of give this beautiful 1930s silhouette with the halter and this cream silk. And it's a little different in my opinion because the plunge feels a little bit deeper, I'm gonna be honest. Maybe it's just because Angelina's turned to the side in the picture that I'm looking at, but I like that deep plunge. I think Sydney pulled it off well. I think she looks good. She's not wearing an Angelina Jolie dress and Angelina Jolie is literally decapitating her a la David and Goliath in terms of she wore it better. I think Sydney is keeping up with Angelina and it looks nice. So let's talk about best and worst. Best. Oh, Catherine O'Hara. Love. Love the Robert one. I'm gonna put Coleman Domingo in Balmain. I'm gonna put a little, oh, Hunter Shaver with the cape in Bottega. Very good. Kendall Jenner, I liked a lot. Jennifer Lawrence, I loved, I loved, I loved. Kylie, wow, the Kardashians are, they're taking some home. Oh, Lupita, I did really, really like that. Lily Gladstone, I also really liked. Michelle Yeoh, gorgeous. Margot Robbie, gorgeous. Laverne Cox, gorgeous. Yeah, happy. As for worst, America Ferreira, unfortunately. I don't want to have to do that, but I have to. Emily Radajkowski, I'm going to put Florence Pugh, Greta Lee, I'm going to put Kim Kardashian because the fit of that was still insane to me in not a good way. Oh, Rose, did not love at all. And I think that's 
good. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Listen, there's going to be a part two. We have a lot of looks to still discuss. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys in the next video. And TTY out.